Hello NQ Jazz fans and welcome to the latest episode of the NQ Jazz podcast. This week I am chatting to the very incredible Zenya Striglev and Jamie Murray who collectively formed the anarchic duo Jay-Z Replacement. We discuss their debut album, we discuss their collaboration with Rainy Days Records, a Russian record label, we discuss their recent collaboration with Tim Neferba who features heavily on the album and a whole host of things besides. So please sit back and enjoy this interview with Jay-Z Replacement. Hello, Jamie and Zenia. Welcome to the Yankee Jazz Podcast. Thanks so much for, for taking the time out to, to join us. Um, for, for the audience listening who, who may not be familiar with either of you, do you mind giving us a little introduction each about who you are and what you do? I'm a saxophonist. You know, originally from Russia, came to UK to study Royal Academy in 2002. You know, since active on... Um, UK and the European jazz scenes, you know, as well as have some connections with some um, uh, musicians of different parts, uh, other parts of the world, you know, I guess, you know, what do you can say else? Yeah. yeah. And you've, you've got a ton of albums out that people can go and check yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's there's a, albums around, I don't know how many, maybe eight, nine, I don't know. Yeah, but original music, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And Jamie, how about yourself? Can you give us a little overview? Yeah, um, I play drums, mostly. Um, I play, I've been playing a little bit of piano a lot, well, a lot recently, but not, not um, never in public. <laughs> um, and just, yeah, um, I play various different groups, projects, mostly original stuff. Um, in and around London and Europe. Um, and I've got a couple of things going on with, with Xenia, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And, and our, our crowd uh, from uh, NQ Jazz at the Whiskey Jar um, will obviously be familiar with you if they came to Andrew McCormack's Graviton gig that you swooped in and saved the day pretty last minute from what I remember with that. Oh man, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Uh, that was like um, the night before or something. He, yeah. Someone bailed. I think I, I can't remember what the story was actually. Yeah, but but what yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm up for it. I'm up yeah. for it. And then I heard the music, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was a to- total roast to to sit in on last minute, but that yeah, you yeah. you absolutely killed it. That was a that was a great gig. Um, and Alex Hitchcock was stepping on that as well. So you know, yeah. with two members of the band sort of last minute getting everything together, it was yeah, absolutely killer. And then very sadly, of course, you were. You've, you've had the double whammy of Enki Jazz cancellation, sadly, because you were going to be putting in an appearance with Ant Law's quintet. Uh, just like that was the first thing that happened. That was the first gig that had to be cancelled with. Uh, yeah, Marisa yeah, that was like, I was like, oh, it'd be all right. It's, you know. Yeah. It went it south was, really yeah. quickly that weekend. You know? Yeah, I remember. Um, it's like it started to kick off. Yeah, so that does heartbreak. And then obviously we would have had the two of you for Jay Z replacement um, this week, just gone. Uh, so yeah, so sorry to have not not got you back. Yet. <laughs> Zenia, Zenia, right. We're still still yeah. waiting to have you for Exactly. Yeah, and and obviously we'll we'll make it happen as soon as we can once uh, things are back to some sort of vague normality. So listen, how have you guys been finding lockdown and isolation life? What have you been doing with your time? How have you been keeping sane? Um, I guess um, I'm just practicing a lot. I don't know. Just just try to practice all whole day, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, doing some um, little. Also, I'm kind of constantly working on some um, upgrading my saxophone. You know, so adding little small so-called tricks, maybe you know, like to in order to be able to play like just technical things you know mm. so i was working for that for a while you know um because i mean actually but someday i want to do like maybe customed you know saxophone which i already spoke to some company in holland let's see how it happens you know could be could be interesting nice. um and then i also kind of preparing a program with my girlfriend, um, who is plays bass. I mean, he plays violin, but he also she also plays bass. So we practice a lot with her, and she can pull some tunes. So hopefully soon we can play all together, and then you know uh, that could be fun. Yeah. 
So, so basically new material and then plus practicing just the instrument all, all the time. Yeah. Fantastic, loads hey. of music, beautiful. Jamie, yeah? What's that thing I, I wanted to ask you, and I, I think a lot of people wanted to know as well, what, what is that thing that you put on your saxophone? It looks like chewing gum. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> Mad, it's meant. Maybe it is chewing gum. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it's a perfect um, representation of his brain. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, there's a few things you, know, you can chew. Oh wow. Yeah, this kind of things. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm still working on it, and for example, yeah, this yeah. I haven't put it into the into the hard stuff. You know. Have so, you got? You know, have like you got that. really? big hands or what's the what's the <laughs> no, thing it's not about really big hands it's just um i have really small hands so oh, okay uh, yeah but the whole point here is like there is a there is just it's some a few combination of razor raising you know and um it's they also have on the soprano you know it's basically somehow to figure out the best position for your hand yeah so you do as less movements as possible you know yeah 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 so as as you because as more movements you do, as less you if you can take some space from your head, you know. Is it is it more is it like for efficiency in technique? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And plus it's not just that, it's also yeah, basically for technique, yeah. So uh because some stuff of course you need to practice all the time, that's for sure. But some stuff you just um you just can't play some combinations. For example, uh, this, um, like, uh, yeah, some, some, like, for example, triple, you know, like a B flat B, you know, like, a... um, this is, this is not very easy to do it on a normal setup, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like B or like C sharp B flat, you know. <laughs> So it's, a C, uh, it's a D flat C sharp. That's also not very, not very on, on a normal setup. You just can't do it like really, you know. Yeah, I suppose so, as a as a point of comparison for people who aren't so familiar with what saxophones look like, that that's what that bit of the saxophone would would. Yeah, yeah. Try to like play. Either. Try to play. Try to play B flat B. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, yeah, not easy to get it flat. smooth through there. And the C sharp. Yeah, yeah. That also, um, like I know. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to trill between the two, it's. Uh... Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And then all this chromatics, you know. Oh, right. You, know, when I have a lot of <laughs> you, you can have this one, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all this kind of thing. You, know? you guys were about to get into one. I'm like, no. <laughs> so and, and 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 also make sure your your finger doesn't get tied. That's the important thing mm. because you know you can you can you can do it sometimes because I, I kind of could do it before you know, but it also depends how much um, um, efforts it kind of takes. You know? Yeah, doing doing that repeatedly without building yeah. the keys up would be really hard work on your finger. It would put a lot of strain. Yeah, on. exactly. I've so you, you feel it, yeah? You feel yeah, it when... when... I mean, I've been having joint problems in my fingers for about a year now. So I, I get some really, really bad pain. And I've been into rheumatology and hospital and all of this um, several times, but they, they've ruled out arthritis, but they don't know what it is. So I'm just stuck with painful fingers, which is not ideal for it. So, 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 so that's, that's, that's a perfect situation for you, because that means you have to make it as less movement as possible, as straight sure. hand as possible. So, so well, you, you don't do any, any bending, because if as more yeah. bending you do, as more you have pains. That's it. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, but for, for me, thankfully, the saxophone isn't something that's causing pain yet. But obviously, we don't know how these things go. And obviously, it's good to make sure you take any strain off that you can. But like clarinet and flute, like really, really painful. And even like mundane things like gripping a pen and writing, that can okay. be very painful for me as well. So I mean, I guess it's strange, be but you know, yeah. the, the, the doctor originally just said, ah, oh, just take loads of ibuprofen, you'll be fine. And then I ended up in hospital with like acute heart pain. And it turned out like, the ibuprofen's been like thinning the lining of my stomach, so like that's not an option. I mean, for them, it's a different. For them, they have a different. I mean, first of all, you 
sell they sell you lots of all this ibuprofen you know and secondly it like i can then like one hassle less you know after you have the heart attack you know <laughs> that's it that's it yeah <laughs> get rid of the employee <laughs> musician <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jamie, listen, what have you been up to in, in lockdown? How have you been finding life? Uh, it was all right for the first couple of weeks. Um, and then it got a little bit, just one, one day rolls into the next, doesn't it? Mm. I don't know about you, I've got no sense of time yeah. anymore. <laughs> I, need to, I, need to, I need to uh, maybe strengthen up my, my routine, but <clears throat> I'm, um, what have I been doing? I've just been practicing and... and um, Oh yeah, I've been buying lots of funny things. Like I found um, a, a website that sells like vintage stuff that belonged to Elvin Jones. So I bought his brushes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this insecurity about brushes. So I'm like, if I buy Elvin's brushes, I'll sound amazing. <laughs> yeah, look at Zenio, he's like, okay. <laughs> I won't ask you how much you spent on <laughs> Elvin's brushes. <laughs> Yeah, because well, if, if this, this is going live, isn't it? So my girlfriend will be like, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine possibly even went one step further. An amazing drummer around Manchester uh, called Johnny Hunter. Um, but he's just had a, his first child, his first baby. Um, and the baby's called Elvin. And uh, Hannah, his partner, I think likes the name, but hates the fact that it's named after, <laughs> he's named after a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there you go that's first child just called name it after a drummer <laughs> oh, there's, there's, uh, there's this thing that elvin used to do it's quite famous he used to um take a piece of wood and some nails and he used to hammer his bass drum to the floor mm. there's pictures of him doing it because it would always slide so he'd always just like hammer the the nails into the floor you know the venue would always get like <laughs> holes in the floor yeah and um, this guy where I bought the brushes, he said in that piece of wood, right, with the nails that, that mm. belonged to Elvin, for $300. <laughs> <laughs> That's mad, isn't it? Man, yeah, I definitely yeah. won't ask you about the, the brushes. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, listen, I'm, I'm glad you're both keeping active and, and positive and all of the rest. So, listen, let's let's delve into the, the music a little bit then. So, um, for people who obviously aren't familiar, you guys collectively are Jay-Z replacement. Um, but as your musical partnership goes back further than that. So, let's, let's start a bit further back. Uh, was Beat Replacement the first project that you worked on together? Yeah. Yeah, and so Jamie, that that's your your project, is that right? You you set that up. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to just put something together, and then um and then Zenya got involved, and then um it was kind of going pretty well actually. And then and then I think I can't remember how it started, but I think Zenya came in with like a the the displacement A idea first, something like that. It was a song that he I think he presented, and as a duo, it was like a feature in the set mm. of the main set. And it kind of just evolved from there, I think, if I remember. Yeah, I think, I think basically we had, you know, we did some with beat replacement and then we kind of said, oh, let's just practice in do, you know, it's just good to work on some stuff, you know? Yeah. Because we can't make lots of rehearsals with the whole band. Let's just do practice and do. And that was one of the... Displacement A was um, kind of first tune to try out, you know, but, and then, you know, it's, so I brought the draft and then we kind of played, then, then corrected, you know, so that's how it's all started. And then we played it as a, a, the, as a featuring during gig and it's like, oh, it's actually, let's do more, more tunes, you know, that's, that's how it started, you know. Great, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think and as far as I remember, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and so and so is is beat replacement still a an active thing? Obviously, you know, ignoring our current situation. Um, are, are you still are you still active with that, Jamie? Or has that not been as much at the moment? I'd like to be. I've been writing songs for it. I've Great. been um I've been writing a lot of music lately. Um, on Logic. Um, but yeah, it's um. I still need to mix and master the album which was recorded. Cool. Yeah. But it's yeah. So would we be hoping maybe like that's a twenty twenty one release coming 
if things go well? If, or? if it's not if it's not twenty twenty one, there's something wrong. Okay. <laughs> Great, yeah. It's, it's it's not like you you're swamped with other things to be doing right now. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, yeah, we look look forward to that when it happens. So, so with um with Jay Z replacement, obviously you you're working with maybe a slightly unusual gigging instrumentation of of sax and drums. You know, stripping away everything else that you know you you would normally have in any kind of jazz setting. Anyway, you know, obviously bass and, um, and any sort of chordal instrument um, and from the stuff that I've checked out the the compositions that you've got are pretty long form uh, you know of, often in you know a jazz group that the tune might only be like 30 seconds long even sometimes you know but sometimes yours like several minutes of of planned material of, of some description and I was wondering how 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 does the composition process work for you guys is it very much a, a collaborative thing or or do you go away, have your own things, bring them together. And and how did this really long form thing for at least some of the tunes end up coming about? Um, basically, I bring some drafts, you know, and then we're working on it, learn the drafts. And then we go from there, you know, because we can basically have like, for say, let's say three tunes, we, we learn them, the, the original draft, and then we like play solos, you know, and then think, you think, think how maybe create some uh, bass line, so-called, which is, uh, could be just the ba bass drum pattern, you know, mm -hmm. which, you know, which is kind of, that's the, that's the idea, is that uh, the whole do, which is interesting, exciting to have the, the sound that just doesn't need actually anything else. So, but obviously you need the spectrum of, uh covered you know and the bass drum have to be more present and have to be like as a you know kind of a function of the bass guitar or bass plus i'm playing sometimes just bass lines not solo uh, behind jamie's uh solo so so okay so when once to learn this draft we you know kind of think about the ideas how to make a piece out of that draft you know so sometimes we change the little bit the order of parts you know change a little bit the bass briefs you know or even just make from this three tunes one you know and that's why maybe it could be sometimes long because we just okay maybe we just do one of all of them you know yeah so yeah. that's 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 how it goes in Mexico, most of the time yeah yeah, and how 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 do you enjoy the the freedom that you that you can then find in this instrumentation compared to any other projects that you work in? It's just a completely different concept and, and context. You know, the spectrum seems to be really wide. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's really easy for for us to go into an improvisation mode um, because we do that a lot. But that's I guess that's why a lot of the pieces end up being long and composed because it's 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 easy to just play free in a way, I guess, as a duo. So it's, it's nice. We, we really try to think about composing parts and composing grooves and thinking about uh, where, where would the music like to go, you know, because it's, I mean, we, 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 we play quite a lot, so it's, it's easy to sound, you know, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's just the flow is kind of natural when we're improvising. So it's nice to try and keep things composed quite a lot. Um, That's it. I think it, 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 can, like it can become, you know, with with two musicians compared to you know four, and with with maybe the the middle of the sound that you would normally expect to hear, maybe you know a bit thinned out. Um, it's easy for that to maybe for some people become predictable, you know, and so yeah. it it's it seems like a, a healthy thing that. Um, that you know you you compose so much of the material and but that you you play so much you have the freedom to really take it wherever you want to as well i agree you know that's that's the situation is that um to create something you know rehearsed so it's not like uh free improv you know alvin jones and you know <laughs> and joe <laughs> um so uh, and uh, also another actually to make something that is not possible with the band 
because with the band to work really on uh, small details, you know, like practicing with the metronome or like on some eight and 16 notes is just, is just very, uh, un, you know, difficult, you know, because it's many people and people busy, you know, and uh, not many people willing to just sit there and just work on the small details because, and it's kept because it have to be regularly. You can do it once, oh, that's great, you know, and then you put it back and then you return to this month later and then it's like going gone, you know. So it's got yeah. to be always kind of repeating and uh, develop like an upgrading, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, and there's the, um, that's one of the ideas, like to create something tight, um, really, uh, you know, product done project, but no kind of like, you know, bullshit, you know, but with the, with the, some, a lot of freedom too, you know, but freedom, which is, um, because one of the ideas, so to make it this freedom to set up different moods, you know, one tune we have this maybe long. So when we do this f- f- improvising, it's not just like we're going into space again, you know. Uh, it's uh, there's a little bit different uh, moods, you know, different little bit um, atmosphere, you know. So so one of the goals which we're still working. So like if you switch on like in the middle of the tune. Even we were like, it's like like playing free, you know, and then in one tune and then switching out another tune and compare this middle part without even hearing the tune. It has to be somehow different, you know? Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure, and I, I, and that that comes across. That there's a really strong character to to each tune, which is great. Yeah, work really yeah. on the characters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's like to develop that really situation because you know one of the reasons people, for example, don't like listening standards. You know, because what happens? I don't like sometimes listening standard too. But what happens? People play the head, and then what happens? the same thing you know like it's like and it's like okay so i mean what on which tune you're playing you know it's like <laughs> it's like uh, so and that's why it's getting sometimes boring because it's like every solo like the, and the standard could be beautiful but then it's like the melody finished and then we're here we are playing the same tune and and every on every standard you know yeah no 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 i totally know where you're coming from and so um and t- tied into everything you're talking about is is the fact that I think you've got a very broad palette of influences and like in terms of genre and and sound world. So I mean, with how much of it was a specific thing that you talked about the sound that you wanted to have with the band, or do you just keep experimenting with different things and seeing seeing what you like? Um, it just seemed pretty natural to me because yeah. it was like. <clears throat> Um, I, I love lots of different styles and types of music, you know. Um, I mean, that, to me, music just is either good or bad. So it's 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 you know, I've never had to deal with styles or things like that. I don't think I just for me, it's just trying to get in the character of the piece. You know, like what is it trying to tell me? You know, it's like stepping inside of a picture. You know what I mean? It's like oh, it's raining. Um, okay, I need an umbrella. You know, it's cold. I need a coat. You know, it really is like that. And it's like, I think that way you kind of don't, if, if your foundation is jazz and it's improvising and you bring in all, the, all of these different experiences of music on top of that, you don't really create a style, you know, you just create your own kind of personal expression towards it. And, and all of these different things come out, you know. <clears throat> um, and I think that's what comes across in, in the music. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So listen, it, it feels like maybe it's a good time to to stick the first track on that you've you've picked out for us after we've talked about all of this. People wanna people wanna hear what's going on. So the first tune you've picked out for us is a uh, is Frog's Riot. Is there anything you'd like to say about the the piece at all before it's we? It's a have Frog's Tango, Frog's Riot, Jim, Jimmy. Frog's Riot. What's that? Is it Frog's Riot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. From where? <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, the gun factory. Gun, 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 gun. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, it's kind of little fun little tune. I thought yeah. it's like different, yeah. I guess, I mean, in fact, 
this frog's rights, it's not a full version of those frog's rights, but I guess it's nice kind of to have like a duo version because we have frog's rights, uh, trio version with Tim. Tim, yeah. So, and this is the duo. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe it's actually could be interesting to play this frog's rights and then the one with Tim. So just to compare, you know, how, what is the difference, you know? Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. oh, I don't know, whichever, you know, I mean, I mean yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm up for that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can do it. Okay. So let's maybe, yeah. Sounds good. Let's, let's sit back and have a bit of Frogs Riot with, uh, with Jay-Z replacement and then a bit of Frogs Riot uh, featuring Tim LaFerber as well.
Great, so that was that was two versions well, that of was amazing. Wow. Yeah. Woo. Kill it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was two versions of, of Frog's Riot there. So let's let's chat now about um the collaboration with, with Tim. So this has obviously been quite an intense thing. This wasn't like a, a one off. You did a whole a whole tour and the the new album that came out a couple of months ago is obviously with, with Tim as well. So how did that partnership come about and um why did you want to bring Tim in and, and all of that? Basically, while we were doing um, rehearsing duo, you know, and playing um, one of the ideas which occur while we were doing that is that it's nice to have um, also guests, you know, mm -hmm. and the idea that we practice something together, we set up and then we have, uh, you know, somebody like, not like jumping in, but um, yeah, like somebody come in and just join a little bit of our party, you know. <laughs> Um, and one of the ideas was, um, uh, which happens to me is that, uh, Tim could be the perfect, uh, person actually to <laughs> join that party. I already recorded how many, like three, four or oh, three albums with Tim. And then he was like one of my favorite, um, bass players you know I, I loved him since my first time he heard him live i guess at charlie rice where we brought him play there it was uh, the the came with the rudder and with mark juliana it was the first gig of mark juliana actually in london but his project mm -hmm. beat music they played at charlie rice we brought we brought them and then also rudder came and then it's like oh that's amazing so after that i kind of became a fan of him with her mm -hmm. then did a few albums with him and then i was thinking oh that's could be great plus i really wanted jamie to play with uh, international uh, musicians like on of that caliber you know from america you know and plus knowing that team is very open-minded uh, musician and i was thinking that this the like the characters also will work well which which went which went you know mm. Uh, so that's, yeah, that was the idea. And I pointed him and he was up for it. You know, he's like, oh yeah, great. He listened a bit to Jamie, you know, I sent him something. It's like, oh yeah, great. You know, I, I love his playing. So let's do something. So that's, that's how it's, um, happened. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And so, so why did you then decide from, obviously the co collaboration went well and all of this. And um, how, how was the decision made that, okay, we're going to record our album. We've been this duo for you know, a few years. Now we're going to do our first album. It's going to be a trio. <laughs> we're going to use Tim on the album. How's, how did that come about? We, the idea of the album we did is was think we were thinking to do maybe like half. Really. I just realized it's a trio. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. <really, laughs> it just makes me laugh. As I just realized we've recorded trio, not duo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, like, yeah. the idea, in fact, was to have uh, maybe half of in duo and half in trio. Yeah, sure. And, um, and then while we were doing it, we listened to all the material and I was thinking, you know, um, let's just leave it because there's some, we don't want to do a too long album. And uh, we just got the material and it was like, you know, we're not going to st stressing out about it. It's still, it still sounds as a duo because we are, I mean, if you listen carefully, uh, you can you can hear that you know we you can hear the energy that uh, from there that we kind of we are one thing than team although he although he is really in, engaging with us it's still it's still kind of um, um, you know it's um, guest mm. so yeah I mean that's that's I don't have any problem with that 
we're not going to like doing oh why, why we didn't do do you know no I know. It, it sounded it sounded good we liked it and yeah, yeah. um and you know what we, we will do do album maybe we're not ready yet for the do album in fact you know and i think that's the that's the reality we listen to some stuff and it's like do you know what let's wait let's wait yeah, with yeah. the do thing there's still one tune uh in do but and there are some lots of, as you see, there are some parts in do, like first tune displacement A, we play a lot in, like in do, the whole head in do. But in terms of like whole album in do, I guess, um, I guess it's the time hasn't come yet, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Great. Yeah. And so, and so you also, you brought out um, the album with a, a Russian record label uh, called Rainy Days. Um, and your last, or certainly a, a number of your albums, Xenia, have, have been with Whirlwind Recordings. Um, and so just wondered why, because obviously the two of you are, are currently based in, in London. Yeah. How was the decision made? Oh, this is a, a, a good label to go with for, for this record. Um, I mean, uh, one of the, in these situations, decision sometimes, um, there's two aspects when you make decision one is actually deal what kind of deal you have you know and another way way you, you see what is the intention of the people you know what's the ambitious you know mm -hmm. and with with the um, plus you also see how um your current you know situation you know because i, I will win was very helpful for me and he was the first album we released which was smiling organism in 2011 i think it was uh which was like with larry green deal larry harland mm -hmm. lee noble was there and um the great trumpet from who lives in new york also um and i couldn't find anybody to release it you know like i sent a few people and it's like no interest you know Crazy. so and we went uh, was like <laughs> Oh great! Amazing! Let's do it. You know, so, uh, yeah. so he uh, he straight away grabbed it. You know, and then he released it. Okay, we didn't make much, you know, money, whatever. You know, but the fact, but he he, uh, you know, he was the one who released it. You know, when I, we, we didn't do anybody, and so that's and he has this. Um, he goes for risks. You know, he he, which is a lot of. You know, people don't go for risk, and sometimes his staffers be with that. You know, you can see, but lots of good stuff wouldn't be happening if somebody didn't have a risk. You know, yeah, so that's uh, that's uh, important thing. You can't ride on a safe, you know, boat all the time and think like, oh, I'm doing some interesting, amazing things. You know, so it was really helpful. And then he also uh, released my other albums and did a lot of promotion you know what he was trying to so he was very helpful you know mm -hmm. and um i did i think we did like three albums or something or oh, four yeah and yeah so it was i mean it's all good it just uh, after we did the last album with him which was blues for maggie which is mm -hmm. uh was nice album which is dedicated to maggie black who really was also helpful um in my uh, music, uh, you know, kind of adventures. Plus, she also was helping some quite a lot of other musicians. So I'm I'm not uh, familiar with Maggie Black. Do you, would you mind? Yeah, she's she's from Scottish. She's a big fan of jazz, you know, and she used to run some. She was organizing, used to organize some concerts, uh, inviting different people. So quite a few people who played, you know. So just uh, sometimes she can a little bit. I mean, she's not like rich or something, but she just have little like some savings. So sometimes she uh, give people a little bit for the recording, you know, or something. So and I stayed and also I stayed with her for a long time, like, I don't know, seven years. And when I was looking, didn't have place to stay. She had like a small room. She's like, okay, okay, jump in, you know, just stick around, you know. Yeah, okay. And I was living there. So that was really supportive. So there's the last album, Blues for Maggie, is dedicated here. Uh, and a great album, which I'm really happy about. Okay. And then, and then meanwhile, during that time, my friend from St. Petersburg, whom a long time friend, whom I was starting playing my first jam sessions in like, like a long time ago, Sasha Marshall, he's a great drummer. He invited me to 
to participate in the recording of the album for the new label, which his friends were starting in St. Petersburg. And that was Rainy Days. So we recorded album. It was under his name. I contributed like four tunes, four of my tunes, or five, I don't remember. And that's how this relationship with Rainy Days happens. And I know, and, and I meet the people and I can see there's really healthy energy and they really want to do something, promote um, some jazz, also educate Russian audience because it's uh, you know bring some contemporary jazz to russia because uh, it's yeah. it's you know it's what a lot there is either free jazz in russia like uh, or um, straight ahead you know like but it's not really you, you can't some it's the, the kind of contemporary jazz not really developed so they want to develop that niche there Great. plus so this this label and the plus they also want to promote um uh you know one of russian artists so one of the help so one of the accents is uh, to do albums which somehow involve uh russian artists i mean yeah. it, it doesn't really have to be but at the moment that's um one of the themes yeah so um and uh, i think it was, was kind of um perfect situation then i did i had this album um or i had this musicians little tour in in russia with um with my friend chilean guitarist from the like, guitarist from chile and then two american musicians and then we were played in russia a few gigs which is actually was funny because we were invited by my friend from from uk who was used to run a festival in Russia, you know, <laughs> classical festival. He was, he was artistic director of the opera theater. Very kind of, you know, interesting character. Speaks Russian, you know, better than me. And his father was a, like, um, he's a wrong connection. He was father BBC, quite, quite well known, some BBC reporter in 60s, 70s, living in Moscow, you know, all this like spies stories, you know. <laughs> but it's interesting. So he's a really character. So he invited us and then we did this uh, gigs in Russia and then rainy days released. We were interested to release in the, the, do the recording and releasing. It's like, yeah, that's great because it's perfect. We did the Russian tour, Russian label, you know, from St. Petersburg. It's all, you know, all good. And, um, and then that's how kind of relationship started. And then, um, and then we had this project, which we, which they somehow I sent, they saw some clips, I think, I think we did a gig or something and they liked it and they said, oh, let's do it, you know. So, um, Fantastic. So that's how it's happened, you know, so it's a kind of naturally all um, developed here. Yeah. And they yeah. do also, yeah. Well, I was going to say that, that that's fantastic. It sounds like they're they're doing a, a fantastic job of of you know trying to really push the the scene forward where where they are. You know? Yeah, so, and we and we had a little bit actually UK themed small festival in in uh, October because it was a day it like was a year of UK in Russia. So Jamie, I mean Jamie played. Actually, Jamie was coming a few times to Russia to just to rehearse, which was amazing. We were just mm -hmm. rehearsing at our country house. Uh, that's again pointing, uh, giving them like uh, information that you know it's it's not easy to create to do with the band what we're trying to do and do just uh, in terms of learning the tunes, putting the accents on the details because you know where did you find the whole band going for like two weeks in Russia in the country house without a yeah. toilet? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> he's not joking. Is <laughs> No shower, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. We practiced so much there, didn't we? Yeah, that was good. So, so basically, they did a little festival, um, the rainy days. Uh, Elliot Galden came mm. with presenting his stuff. Then Phronesis came. Mm. Uh, we invited them. So they do all the kind of little uh, stuff. Uh, uh, also, so I mean, there's right. there's a good energy. So. We'll see how it develop. You know, we may actually release soon another album because we just got this uh, live. It's got live. Uh, I just were listening live version of 
Jay Z replacement gig at Vortex, and actually great, you know. Right. Like, oh, that's crazy. Why? So we may release it, you know, like at the, the end of the year, you know, something. So that's the story. I don't know, Jamie. What What do you think about Rainy Days? What? How is it? Um, was it for you? Because you you judging from your kind of <laughs> uh, church. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what you're trying to ask me. Yeah, just how how was the experience of working with Rainy Days for you? Yeah, they're amazing though. They are amazing. Yeah. Like I, I think you know, I don't I don't have a lot of experience with labels, but as far as organising and and being proactive and making things happen, they really put in a lot of effort to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, they were just just great. It just really it seemed really easy, you know. Yeah, great. Well, that, that's the main thing, isn't it? Take take the pressure off the artist, just make it make it happen. And so, de yeah. definitely to to anyone watching, um, go and check out Rainy Days and all the the stuff they're doing. Sounds like they're they're doing some really important work. So, fantastic. Listen, I think it's a good time to to delve into the the final track that you've picked out for us to have a listen to, which is Eastern, um, and also featuring Tim. Uh, Jamie, have you got anything you'd like to say about this one before we before we roll it? Um, get ready. <laughs> Thank you. 
Great, so that was Eastern, fantastic. Uh, some burning energy from, from you guys. Um, so listen, what, what does the, the future hold as much as we're able to make plans for the future at the moment? Uh, but bo both for Jay-Z replacement and individually, uh, other, other projects you're involved in, your own, own music. Uh, uh, Jamie, do you want to kick us off with that? Yeah, um, well, I've got, I've got a couple of projects on the side as well. I've got a group of guys that I'm playing with in Valencia called Val Muse. Cool. Um, and you know they're 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 fun. They're they're like um, I guess they're a bit more poppy, I suppose. But they they've got um, you know they've got a cool setup. They're always doing like these really good videos and you know accessible tunes, I guess. But um, and I'm writing a lot for beat replacement. Um, I've been writing quite a lot of tunes, and um, I guess I'm just preparing myself to be in, I guess, pole position when we're allowed out mm. to just be proactive and, and make sure that, you know, I'm ready to play and, and keep up with Xenia, you know, because <laughs> I know he's practicing, so I want to be able to make sure that I'm strong too. Some good you tempo's know. coming, some good tempo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> be prepared, you know, and just be like, you know, just, so there's no, I don't want to play catch up on myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to be ready and, um, mm. and just, just, you know, writing music and just basically mm. the same as what I was doing before, but hopefully um, with with um, some added bonuses that I wouldn't have done without the lockdown, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's, well, you wouldn't have had Elvin Jones's brushes without the lockdown. So. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> the yeah. magic is coming. Fantastic. Yeah. And and Zenia, how about yourself? What what are you? What's brewing with you at the moment? Yeah, I mean, this kind of similar thing. I mean, trying to be occupied because actually when you occupied times also goes faster plus after like two months past you like look back and it's like okay something done you know uh, so that makes you don't want like to spend three three months of lockdown and then look oh i went through it and then it's like and nothing done you know of course sometimes it's difficult you basically if you're depressed or whatever it's difficult to you know to work on something but i guess that's the challenge you know to somehow convince yourself to do something. Uh, and, um, you know, that's a bit, a bit of forcing yourself uh, um, to, I mean, to practice, you know, of course, you know, because something that you didn't have time to practice before, like some really boring stuff, you know, which is like <laughs> some really like uh, some some fundamental very that, but some really like it takes like time, like to play one note for like an hour, you know, something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something like this, you know. So really, um, three months of quiet long notes. Yeah, yeah, something really like not just uh, you know go through some stuff, but like work on like. Um, some boring things, you know, which is okay. It's boring, but after you've done, it's like, oh, actually, I feel kind of better, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like the, because you know, like it's once you've done it, it you feel actually better, you know. Yeah, for sure. So is you like you um, enthusiastic? So yeah, I mean, sometimes it's more easy, sometimes it's less easy. Um, so that's um, that's the story. Also, just also, you know, you just go to piano i need to have quite a lot of drafts also tunes with i need to fix the you know harmony to put the so which is also the yeah, yeah, yeah. is that for a, a new project or for an existing band or? uh it's i mean that's for anything could be it just i mean for some of the some yeah for some jay-z of course tunes you know because it's uh, there's some stuff um kind of unfinished so-called so i need um, because sometimes we have guests we have we will have we had uh, like a guest in russia piano player uh which is you know very talented piano player um and um i need i need you know some of the tunes require some help or it's not help uh requires some work on the harmony and i didn't have a keyboard for a long time so now i have so I, so work on that you know right. yeah, some yeah. of some of the harmonies you can guess on the saxophone obviously you can find but some of that some of that not you need you need the keyboards you know for sure yeah. um, i was gonna say i think um another thing that's that's helping me a lot mentally is just 
trying to inspire yourself with goals. For example, um, you know, I'm really grateful Xenia managed to hook me up to play with Tim, you know, because mm -hmm. it really brought out a different side of my playing, you know, it gave me that inspiration. So I like the idea of, of thinking that's possible with lots of people, you know, that you might desire to play with. So trying to conjure up little plans of how you can make that happen, you know, and get excited about playing with people that you really, you know, would like to collaborate with is, I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's absolutely true. You know, it's like this, you know, I mean, so of course, course. nothing, it's nothing, because collaboratives, you know, going on and it's like yeah, and nothing is nothing is not possible, so called, you know. Mm. Obviously, there are limitations, you know. But um, you know, as long as there's some work done, that's the most important thing, you know. Yeah, and then you know, it takes some, maybe it takes some time, but as as you put more work into it and more kind of try to be also look more wide you know because of course you can practice for 12 hours a day but it depends also how you what you practice too that's very important mm -hmm. um so um so yeah so th that's a good point you know to set up some goals long-term goals like for in, in a year you know and it's like yeah so because it's also nice to uh set up some goals which actually takes a lot of time to prepare like like let's say yeah. let's say you know i want okay i have this whatever lockdown and uh, yeah so i wanted to do a, i wanted to do a painting you know and i don't know this to, to to write this painting will take me a year you know if i work every day you know and but so but so it's nice so that's great, you know, and uh, that means to, you know, do something profound, you know, which takes some time, not just, oh, I've done it, that's great, you know, like that, that's easy. Something which is actually difficult to do. Yeah. Which takes some um, polishing, some some proper, you know, some stuff which is, uh, uh, which you can see, okay, that's, I spent some like time on it and really put my, really put my think about it, but details, you know, like, so that's that. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, that's beautiful. you put that goal and then work on it. You know, then you know. Fantastic. Well, yeah. Thanks so much. I, I would normally round it by specifically asking what your top tips for surviving lockdown are, but I think you've you've summed that all up beautifully in the, in the yeah. last few minutes there. So yeah, thank thanks so much, guys. It's been a massive pleasure having the two of you two of you on the podcast. And um, yeah, everyone listening, go and check out disrespectful. Uh, uh, upon you know all the the usual media yeah. outlets, go and go and check it out, and maybe maybe a live uh, album coming from the Vortex at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah, that that's, that should be good. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll we'll keep up. Yeah, we'll update. You know, obviously we have a Facebook page. You know, which you'll maybe give it a link. You know, which will sure, yeah. put we'll put the updates. And, and of course, the Beat Replacement album. Hopefully, twenty twenty one is the year. Hopefully, we will be. Yeah. Exactly. It's got to be. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks so much, guys. Keep safe, keep well, and uh, we hope to have you up at the, the whiskey jar as, as soon as we can once all of this is, has passed by. So, yeah, well, yeah let's bye. do it. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, guys. Yeah. All the best. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Bye bye. 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 Hello again, NQ Jazz fans. Thanks so much for taking the time to tune into my interview this week with Jamie Murray and Zenia Strigalev. Please check out Disrespectful out on Rainy Days Records. Please also head over to patreon.com forward slash NQ Jazz to check out the rest of our podcasts, our concerts and our film series. Take care and we'll see you again soon.